Hello gamers. Today we're taking a look at Nvidia's quote unquote $749 GPU, the GeForce RTX 5070 Ti. Here, I have the MSI GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus Edition, which comes in a black color variant. The retail box includes a 12 volt high power adapter and a GPU stand. The adapter features a yellow tip design, making it easier for users to check whether the connector is properly seated. However, the adapter itself is stiff and closely resembles the older design, with the yellow tip being the only notable change. I'm glad that MSI no longer includes its traditional graphics card support bracket. That bracket was difficult to install and took up a PCI slot. Instead, MSI now includes a graphics card stand, similar to the one provided with the RTX 5090 Supreme model. However, the stand feels plasticky and less premium. NVIDIA's latest RTX 50 series Blackwell GPUs introduce a host of new features, including DLSS 4 multi-frame generation, NVIDIA Reflex 2, RTX neural shaders, neural rendering, the new transformer model, and more. However, I won't be focusing on these features in this video, as there's a lot to unpack. Instead, I plan to cover them in a separate video, particularly DLSS 4 multi-frame generation and a comparison between the new transformer model and older convolutional neural networks. The GeForce RTX 5070 Ti is powered by NVIDIA's GB203 GPU and features 8,960 CUDA cores, a 17% increase over the RTX 4070 Ti and a 46% increase compared to the much older RTX 3070 Ti. It also has a GPU boost clock speed of 2,452 MHz, but MSI's RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus Edition comes with a higher boost clock speed of 2,570 megahertz. Interestingly, this boost clock remains the same whether the card is set to silent mode or gaming mode. That said, factory overclock settings feel more like a marketing strategy, a reason to charge a higher price, as NVIDIA's boost technology allows the GPU to dynamically achieve even higher clock speeds during operation. The RTX 5070 Ti features 16 gigabytes of video memory, similar to what the RTX 4070 Ti Super and RTX 4080 series offer. However, the RTX 50 series GPUs utilize newer and faster GDDR7 memory, delivering an effective memory speed of 28 gigabits per second and a memory bandwidth of 896 gigabytes per second on a 256-bit memory interface. In terms of size, the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio is neither massive nor overly heavy. It's actually a reasonably sized, two-slottish graphics card, measuring 338 millimeters in length, 140 millimeters in width, and 50 millimeters in height. It also weighs approximately 1.31 kilograms. Aesthetically, the gaming trio features a clean, all-black design. It's less aggressive compared to the previous generation Gaming X Trio cards, but still retains a subtle gamer vibe. The card includes RGB lighting on the front, along with an MSI logo at the rear. The three stripes on the front shroud, positioned beneath a translucent plastic cover, are where the RGB effects come to life. Meanwhile, MSI has incorporated a holographic sticker, featuring its Dragon logo on the fans, rear end, and back of the graphics card. The front cooler shroud is primarily plastic, while the backplate is metal. Additionally, there's a large cutout on the backplate, allowing hot air to exhaust efficiently, similar to a flow-through design. The card also features the new 12-volt 2x6 power connector, which is backward compatible with the 12-volt high power connector. Given that this is only a 300-watt graphics card, it's unlikely that power connector melting issues will be a concern. The card also features dual BIOS, allowing users to switch between silent mode and gaming mode. While the clock speed remains the same, gaming mode has a more aggressive fan curve, enabling the GPU to sustain higher boost clocks for longer, compared to silent mode. That said, the difference doesn't seem substantial, and personally, I keep the card in gaming mode, as it remains quiet even under full load. Finally, the RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio features MSI's tri frozer 4 thermal design, which includes upgraded fans, improved airflow control, a nickel-plated copper base plate, and more. The cooling solution is so efficient that during my tests, the card only reached a maximum of 66 degrees Celsius. Most of the time, it hovered around 62 degrees Celsius on average at 4K resolution. 
Now, time to see some benchmark results. I tested the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus with an X870E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 9900X. The system also included a 64 gigabyte memory kit running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. Here are the rest of the specifications of the test system used. Let's start with synthetic benchmarks using the 3 d Mark Benchmark Suite. In Firestrike Ultra, the RTX 5070 Ti slightly outperforms both the RTX 4080 and RTX 4080 Super. The same trend is observed in Port Royal and Speedway benchmarks. However, in Steel Nomad, it slightly falls behind the RTX 4080 Super and Radeon RX 7900 XTX. A similar result is seen in Time Spy Extreme. Now, let's look at two specific games first. For Cyberpunk 2077, I use the CNN model and 2X mode frame generation, rather than the newer multi-frame generation. I plan to cover the multi-frame generation and the transformer model in a future video. In the benchmark results shown, only the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio, labeled with FG, has frame generation enabled. The rest of the GPUs are running on the Ultra Graphics preset, with ray tracing and upscaling set to quality. In this example, the RTX 5070 Ti performs slightly behind the RTX 4080 Super without frame generation. At 2560 by 1440 resolution, the RTX 5070 Ti performs similarly to the RTX 4080, 4080 Super, and AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XTX. In some cases, it outperforms these cards, while in others, it lags behind by only a few frames per second. However, there are no instances where it significantly outperforms the RTX 4080 or 4080 Super in raw performance. The only way the RTX 5070 Ti could significantly outperform the RTX 4080 series is by enabling multi-frame generation. The previous RTX 40 series cards were limited to 2X mode, whereas the new RTX 50 series cards support 4X mode, meaning they generate three AI-generated frames for every one native frame. The downside of this technology is that it introduces latency and may cause visual anomalies. NVIDIA doesn't explicitly market the RTX 5070 Ti as a 4K gaming GPU. However, since it performs similarly to the RTX 4080, it is more than capable of handling games at 4K resolution. In fact, the RTX 5070 Ti tends to perform slightly better at 4K, as it is a GPU-bound scenario. While it clearly falls behind the RTX 4090, the RTX 5070 Ti can still comfortably run games at 4K resolution. For graphics-intensive games, enabling DLS upscaling may be necessary, especially when ray tracing is involved. Enabling frame generation, even at 2X mode, can also help improve performance. That said, I'm not a fan of 4X mode or multi-frame generation due to the noticeable latency it introduces. While some gamers may not notice it, I can definitely feel the delay and even see visual inconsistencies, especially in fast-moving or action-packed scenarios. In summary, the RTX 5070 Ti performs on par with the RTX 4080 and 4080 Super, based on my test results. It is also approximately 3 to 4% faster than the Radeon RX 7900 XTX. Compared to its predecessor, the RTX 5070 Ti is about 21% faster at 1440p and 29% faster at 4K than the RTX 4070 Ti. If you're upgrading from an RTX 3070 Ti, the performance difference is night and day. The RTX 5070 Ti is approximately 65% faster at 1440p and 71% faster at 4K resolution. While testing the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus, its average clock speed hovered around 2,763 MHz, with a peak boost clock speed of 2,792 MHz. As expected, even though its advertised boost clock speed is 2,575 MHz, it can boost higher and sustain those speeds longer, as long as the GPU remains cool. In terms of power consumption, the RTX 5070 Ti is slightly more power efficient than the RTX 4080 Super. 
at 4K resolution, it consumed an average of 266 watts, with a peak power draw of 300 watts. In comparison, the RTX 4080 Super averaged 287 watts with a peak consumption of 308 watts. Temperature-wise, the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Gaming Trio OC Plus never exceeded 70 degrees Celsius. On average, it maintained a temperature of around 62 degrees Celsius with a peak temperature of 66 degrees Celsius at 4K resolution. Performance-wise, I don't think the RTX 5070 Ti is bad at all. It performs on par with the RTX 4080 and 4080 Super, while also being slightly more power efficient. Performance isn't the issue with the RTX 50 series GPUs. Pricing and availability are the real concerns. If you can get an RTX 5070 Ti for $750 or close to that price range, it would be a good upgrade, especially if you're coming from a much older GPU. However, if the RTX 5070 Ti is priced above $800, I don't think it's worth it. Unfortunately, RTX 4080 and 4080 supercards are hard to find. They're either out of stock or selling for $1,300 or more. No wonder retailers and scalpers are taking advantage of the situation, driving up the price of the RTX 5070 Ti. My suggestion? Wait for stock and pricing to normalize. The RTX 5070 Ti is a great card, arguably even better than the RTX 5080 in value, but it needs to be priced fairly. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I have another 5070 Ti graphics card in the works. I'll also be comparing it with other GPUs soon. Stay tuned.